YouTube, your boy is back with another message, another prophetic message, another gift from God. If you don't already know, my name is Matthew, which biblically translates to God's gift, which is why I call these videos a gift from God. So, bro, the, the past few days have been so tiring like yesterday was one of the most tiring days i've had in a very very long time which is saying a lot because i have had some tiring days over the past few weeks but yesterday took the cake like definitely took the cake it was one of those days that i i the way i explained it to one of my friends is it was a counterfeit before the, the promise kind of day and what i mean by that is there's a blessing I've been waiting for, a promise that I've been waiting on God to uh, fulfill in my life. And I've been faithful. I've been obedient. And so when this opportunity, lack of a better word, arose, I jumped to it for several reasons. One, like I said, I've been waiting on, um, I've been waiting for money, financial um overflow in my life to occur <laughs> applying for jobs um left a job i've been applying for jobs got a job offer um and i'm just waiting for that promise to show up you know the the benefits of me finding this new job to show up <laughs> Um, but I have not gotten paid yet, but I really have needed, needed to get paid, right? So, just yesterday, I'm, um, well, I'll back up. A few days ago, last week, someone hit me up, um, someone, a kid that used to live in my apartment building hit me up. And he was basically telling me how he needed a favor and, you know, he would pay me for the favor or whatever. And I was like, OK, cool. <laughs> so and the reason I even said, OK, cool, was because there was a situation a few months ago where there is a guy that I became kind of cool with. Um, he was the security guard in my apartment complex and we became really, really cool. Uh, we started sharing different parts of our lives with each other and stuff um we started talking about god and everything so he was a, he was a really good kid and i say kid but he's a grown man he wasn't too much younger than me he was like maybe 22 and i'm only 26 so there's not much of an age gap when i was a senior in high school he was a freshman in high school so there's not too much of an age gap but we were talking about God. He was telling himself about his uh, personal struggles at the moment. And one of them was the fact that he was um, homeless and he was living out of his car. So there was one day where he had asked me like, hey, Matthew, would you possibly allow me to um, like shower in your apartment? Um, and at the time I was dealing with my own uh, like financial dealings. Um, and I kind of felt like, dang, I don't want to tell him that he can. And then um, here I'll, I was dealing with my own financial struggles to the point where I was about to get evicted from my own place. So I didn't want to tell him like, yeah, you can shower in my place. And then, um, you know, I get evicted too um, right after he got evicted. And then he's kind of like, well, why didn't you tell me that you were about to get evicted? And then I would have to explain that to him. And. And so I was like, you know, man, like I told him, hey, um, yeah, you can you can shower at my place, but let's not make it um, a frequent occurrence. Um, because, again, I just didn't want to put him in a situation where he would be in my my place and then I would get evicted in the coming weeks. Lo and behold, it wouldn't be months until I had to leave my place. All right. But. I didn't know that and I just didn't want to put him in the situation and I didn't want the burden of me having to like weigh out what am I going to do for the both of us in this situation for the both of us. And so I told him like, I mean, yeah, you can you can shower in my place, but let's not make it like a frequent thing. Um, and I also told him like, hey, and stop because he had asked me for something else like a few weeks ago. 
it was like for some money and I didn't have any money to give. Um, so I told him like, Hey, and please stop asking me for stuff right now. Like I am going through my own stuff right now. I know it may look like I'm not, but I, I, I definitely am going through it myself. <laughs> so we understood, um, he understood and, um, uh, yeah, he understood. But then later on, like a few weeks ago, I felt so bad about that situation because I felt like, dang, like this kid needed a place to stay. He needed a shower and he had spoken that to me. Like he felt comfortable and humble enough and let his pride go enough to tell me that. And there are some things I could have done more of. Like, mind you, there are some days where like if we're sitting down talking um, and I ordered food, I would order food for him, too. Or if we're sitting down talking, I'm in the lounge doing some work for work. And like I had an extra drink, I would give him an extra drink. So there were things that I would I would do, but they were all things that I would do out of convenience. They weren't things that I were doing out of the spirit of being a cheerful giver. And so like a few a few weeks ago, I texted him and was like, hey man, like I really wanted to apologize to you. Like God put it on my heart to apologize to you because um like you had shared some of what you were going through with me and um I feel like I kind of could have did more. Um, like, it just wasn't from the spirit of being a cheerful giver. And, like, my whole prayer, like, even the prayer that I was saying last night was, like, um, God, um, make me the giver and not the borrower. Because that's something I really, really want to be in my life. Like, I want to be the person who people can, hey, can I borrow $10 from? Hey, can I borrow $5 from? Hey, Matthew, do you have this? Do you have that? That's the person I want to be. I want to be that kind of person. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So, so fast forward, I, I, I felt like I needed to apologize to him. God put it on my heart to apologize to him. <laughs> so I sent that message like, hey, man, like, I apologize. Like, I feel like I could have did more. I know you told me your situation, blah, 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 blah. So now fast forward to the situation I was talking about last week where the kid hit me up for a favor and he said, hey, I'll pay you for it. I felt like, okay, if I have, Lord, if this is, I, is this your way of testing me? <laughs> like, if I have what this kid needs and I can do him a favor, <laughs> let me see if I can help. So yesterday, I was trying to help. And when I tell you that this was the most long, drawn-out process, things that I did not expect, positions and shit that I did not want myself in, like, to the point where I could feel God over and over and over and over and over and over. Give me a chance to, like, remove myself from the situation. Like, uh, I won't go into specific details, but let's just say we went to one place. The place didn't work. We went to another place. The place wouldn't work. And then the car that we're in breaks down in the middle of the street. I'm like, okay, God, is this you? Then they're sharing with me more information about what they need the favor for. And I'm like, hold up. It would have been different if y'all didn't tell me this information. But now, since I know the information, now my, my spirit is disrupted by what y'all are trying to do. So now it's kind of like, y'all are, trying to, y'all are not trying to tell me the full story, but y'all are trying to tell me what you need me to know in order to get what you want from me. Now, then we go to another place. The place doesn't work. Then the car breaks down again. So now we're in the middle of the street, and I'm sitting there in the car, and I'm just thinking to myself, Lord, do I get out of this car right now? Or do I just be patient? Something in my spirit was like, no, you can't get out the car. Like you have to stick, you have to stick this out with the, with them. That's when I knew I needed to get out the damn car because if a strong cold is telling me that I need to stay somewhere when I don't even have any type of obligation to these guys, like I was doing them a favor, then I definitely need to get out the car. So I get out the car, right? I end up going to go eat some food. I'm sitting there and I'm just thinking about it. And then I hit up one of my homeboys um, to like kind of like discuss the situation and like um, kind of like vent about the situation. And he kind of tells me everything that I was thinking, right? Everything that I was thinking. And then I get in the Uber to go home and I get in the car. <laughs> And the Uber driver's like, hey, man, how's your day? I was like, bro, exhausting, like, exhausting day. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. He was like, I've had an exhausting day today, too. I was like, really? 
And he was like, yeah. And I was like, can I pray? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, are you a Christian? He was like, no. I was like, but do you believe in God? He was like, yeah, absolutely. So I just started praying in the car, praying, 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 praying. And it was so crazy to me because I was like, this whole day, this whole day, right, has been exhausting. But I get in an Uber, Uber, Uber car and the Uber driver is so aligned with me that it ends up that my day ends in God. And the situation ends with God. And even me speaking to my homeboy about it, the conversation ends in God. And so God wasn't in the situation that I was in, but he was in the situation when I got out of it. And so, and, oh, that just made me feel so like, I'll tell you more about it in a second. But, okay, so I'm in the car with the Uber driver and I start praying, right? And he was like, so what kind of, what, what, why was your day so exhausting? And I was like, man, I gave him like kind of like brief details. And he was like, he turns around, he looks at me and he goes, so what did you learn? And I was like, dang that is the question of the day and the fact that someone i don't know someone i did not know was able to turn around and look at me and ask that and so i just told him like i told him you can't help you can't help everyone um and say if you're asking god for something and it shows up in a way that you're not really familiar with you're not used to that's just counterfeit before the blessing because man the the favor that i was going to do for them they're like we'll we'll definitely give you like two three thousand dollars like i'm like that's exactly what i need lord like it's so funny that they know exactly what i need how is it that they know exactly what i need like am i supposed to help them am i supposed to do this favor for them but yeah when i was in the car i was like and he was asking me, what did you learn? I was like, man, counterfeit comes right before the blessing. Like, it has to. Because there's no way that they knew exactly what I needed. No, I need money. I never told them an amount. They just knew it on their heart. Or they knew it in their mind, what, what, what I needed. And, and lo and behold, right? And so I get home. I'm still talking to my homeboy. He's still like, uh, mind you, he's a pastor. So he's like giving me correction and like, helping me think through the situation and stuff. And he's telling me everything that I was thinking before I really decided to help. Like, maybe this won't work. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe this because of this reason, this reason, that reason. And he just gave me all the confirmation that I'd already been thinking about. And so when I got in that car and I was able to pray with that guy, it instilled more faithfulness in me. And then when I was talking to my, my homeboy about it, and he was telling me all the things that I was apprehensive and sort of about before deciding to help, I felt like that was confirmation more that just to be more faithful, be faithful, be faithful. Because like I said, the counterfeit comes before the blessing. The counterfeit comes before the blessing. Man. Oh man, so if you are if you are literally in a place of need if you are in a place of need, know that it's coming. It is coming, it is coming, it is coming, it is coming. Whatever it is that you're asking God for is coming. I promise it is. Like cuz there is no reason. No, it's not a coincidence that I was asked to do a favor for someone and they knew exactly what I needed, knew the amount that I needed. And of course, it was a shit show. Of course, it wasn't. God wasn't in that situation, but God will be in the next. If you hold out and you remain faithful, God will be in the next. And then when I woke up this morning, I was watching a prophetic message and the prophetic message was money is coming. And I'm just thinking like, and this is somebody that I watch on YouTube all the time. <laughs> money is coming money is coming and then the other thing bro especially if you know you've been obedient especially when you know you've been obedient like bro when i got home yesterday from all that dealing with all that crap i was so stressed that i wanted to smoke and if you've been following my channel for the past since the beginning of the year that's been one of my things that i've cut out of my life like i not smoking anymore i'm done smoking i feel like it is it just brings your vibration down to a consistent basis. You can't elevate past that point of smoking 
right? So that's one of the things that I've given up. It's not part of the vow that I made to God, but it is definitely something that I'm giving up until like the end of the year so I can see what six months, what a year can do for my life. So I was so stressed that I got back to my place and I wanted to smoke. So as I'm in, as I'm in here, I'm like, dang, Lord, like I would really like to smoke. So I literally began to start smoking. I got the weed. I got the lighter. And I was like, Lord, if you don't want me to smoke, you need to give me a sign right now. You need to give me a sign right now. When I tell you that is when my my homeboy comes home. And I was like, dang, like, I kind of wanted to smoke by myself. I just wanted to be in here and smoke by myself. I was like, okay, I feel like that's the sign. I definitely feel like that's the sign. Then when I make the decision to just, like, sit back down and just watch TV, the show that I'm watching, which is a show that I've been meaning to restart for a very long time, is one of my favorite shows. It literally it dictates, details the life that I want and everything. The, one of the characters that I love said on the screen to the other character, you need to quit smoking. And I was like, dang, Lord. Okay, definitely sign. So when I tell you I went to bed annoyed because I wanted to smoke so bad. I wanted to ease my mind, ease my anxiety. But I ended up just watching um, prophetic messages um, from a few ministries that I follow on YouTube and taking a shower, getting comfortable and going to bed. <laughs> as a way to ease my mind praying, as a way to ease my mind instead of using a vice that I know I want to give up, as a way to ease my mind. So you know you've been obedient. You know there's been signs and signals that what it is that you want is on the horizon. There's been counterfeits that have come before the blessing. You know things have come to try to tempt your temptation so you can go back into your old ways. The blessing is literally coming. I promise you it is coming. It is coming. It is coming. Oh my goodness, it is coming, and I decree that right now. And as I go into prayer, God, I ask for the spiritual authority to lay to rest anything that is giving us delay in our own lives. I ask that you give us the authority to manifest every single thing that we want in our lives over ourselves, Lord. Lord, I ask that you give us the financial abundance that we need to be the giver and not the borrower, because I know your word says in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, you have plans to prosper us, not for our harm, Lord God. I ask that you keep away anyone that is not for our greatest good. Because your word.